Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for stopping in today. Um, Steph is still out of the country and coming back tomorrow. So it's just me today. But um, what we decided for today's topic was to go over the uh, basic rules of MLS and the definitions that they require, because it seems that Steph and I still have a lot of questions on status, status changes in MLS and what the um, rules of MLS are going back to delayed listings and um, excluded listings. So we're gonna go over the basics, but we're also gonna talk about the definitions of what the statuses mean. And I think, um, you know, it's so basic, sometimes a lot of people who just uh, breeze by it. We used to require MLS training uh, for new licensees and they don't anymore. A lot of it was because of COVID, they didn't want people coming into the MLS um, office for these trainings. And so I think a lot of the basic ideas have been sort of brushed to the side as new licensees get started and go into their search. Um, they are need a reminder of what uh, MLS is talking about. And the reason I have on the title page, your know-how to avoid fines and misrepresentations, MLS is pretty diligent about reviewing how uh, listings are turned in. Um, if there are forms that are required that go with new listings, they will remind you gently that the form is missing. They'll remind you gently of other um, infractions of MLS rules. And if you ignore those warnings, they do um, <clears throat> give you a fine. And sometimes in some situations, the fines are pretty substantial. So that's why I think today's review is good. And I want you to ask questions as we go along on anything that you um, have a question about. So my name is Joni Reed, otherwise known as the Sheriff. And um, as I said, keep your uh, position on mute unless you want to ask a question and then unmute yourself or raise your hand or put something in chat, whatever you want. So we'll get started. I think um, the real basics here are I'm going to, I'm going to change this to slideshow. The real basics, obviously, are the um, um, new listing. When it's a new and active listing, it will have. Um, let me just see if I can get there. Um, it will talk about um, a new listing when it's entered. It means that it is available to agents and broker members of MLS to show, available to show. You can't put it in active at an ML, at MLS and then say no showings until Saturday or something. Um, as soon as it goes in as a new listing and it's active, it's available to show. Available means that a listing can be actively shown and actively receive offers. If a listing does not meet the available requirements, it cannot be active. New listings require a new listing contract. You cannot enter a listing as new with an amendment. All listings must be entered into MLS within 48 hour of the date of the listing term. And that date is on the last page of the listing contract where it says the term of this listing is from, and then it has a date, and then it has the expiration date. Do not use the date that the seller signed it. You're using the date of the listing term. And that is 48 hours. It must go into MLS. So that is a very strict and solid rule. Now, as your um, listing is presented and you get an offer, you get an accepted offer, you must change the um, status from active to active with offer within 48 hours of accepting that offer. This is another very strict rule that MLS has. 
and it just shows to the public of agents that it, the property does have an accepted offer. The listing broker is continuing to show the property. This is where there's a the little yellow C on the side of the site in MLS. It, it means the listing is being uh, shown and willing to accept secondary offers. That means there are probably some contingencies that are out there. Um, there are some it, brand new and it's still not quite um, clear that the offer is going to go through. So the seller is willing to keep it active with offer, still allowing showings and still taking secondary offers. Um, home, it must be submitted to MLS within 48 hours of getting that accepted offer. Now, the only exception to putting it in, must put it in active with offer is if this is a house sale contingency and there's a bump clause. In that case, and only in that case, can this listing still stay as new active listing? Because there is a bump clause, the seller still wants to show it, uh, the property, but it is uh, something that they can take a secondary offer and see if they can bump the primary offer. So this is the only exception to um, not putting it in an active with offer when you get an offer is if it is a bump clause, there's a house sale contingency. Any questions about that? Good. Um, the next one is the um, pending listing. And this means that it has an accepted offer and um, the contingencies are pretty much all gone. The listing broker is not required to continue showings and the pending date should reflect the accepted offer of, uh, re reflect the accepted offer date. So So under pending, that's when you're pretty close to your closing date and you will um, put it in as pending. That means no more, no more showings. The seller is satisfied with the offer that they have. Now the next page and next definition is an expired listing. That means that the listing contract has been canceled by an amendment before the expiration date. <clears throat> If it is expired either by naturally reaching the date of expiration in the listing contract or it is forcibly expired, um, then you put that into the um, MLS that is uh, the amendment that says it's expired. And remember, this amendment needs to be signed by the um, broker. So either Steph or I will sign that amendment Ex with the expired listing. So if your seller is decided he's not putting it on the market anymore with you or at all, you can force an expiration date with an amendment to the listing contract. And that's where a broker also has to sign that. So you sign it, seller signs it, and Steph or I sign it. Um, a withdrawn listing. And, and this is something that's pretty, um, confusing sometimes with a lot of agents. Um, if the sole seller no longer wants you to market or to show the property, um, you as the listing broker, you, do not ex you don't have to expire the listing and unless the seller is adamant about that. The listing stays in place until the actual date of the listing goes, but you have withdrawn it from MLS. And that can be situations where, say, the seller um, is ill and, and doesn't want to do any showings for several weeks or things like that. Um, maybe they are going out of town and they don't want any showings while they're out of town. Um, it could be long term, as long as it's within your listing term, um, that the listing can be under withdrawn. While it is withdrawn, it's not available to anyone. Um, no one can show it while it's in withdrawn. It does show in MLS as a withdrawn listing. Um, you can still see everything about the property in 
under the status of withdrawn, but it cannot be shown. So you can't market it and you can't show it. So a lot of people don't understand the distinction between expiring a listing or um, withdrawing a listing, but withdrawing it is a good time, a good status to put the listing in, say if the seller wants a pause or needs a break or can't show it for a while or things like that. You don't, don't lose your listing status, but the property can't be shown during that term. And as I said, that's a pretty um, common uh, confusion for a lot of agents. Uh, the last one is the um, sold listing. And this is when the property has sold and closed, and then you set it to sold in MLS. They must re be reported as sold within 10 days of closing. Again, that's another hard, fast rule, and MLS will sanction you with a fee fine if you do not uh, get it sold status in there within 10 days of its selling. So sanctions may be levied, means they'll charge you a fine. Um, the pending date uh, should reflect the accepted offer date for the closed listing. So those dates are very important to be accurate in MLS because that's how they derive all of their statistics of how many days from a new listing to accepted offer, how many days from new listing to closing. All of those are important dates for statistics in MLS and you should be re reflecting those accurate dates in your uh, with your listing. Any questions about any of these definitions of the different statuses in MLS? Again, no, that, remember, that makes sense. Go ahead. And no, that makes sense. I think you did a nice job of uh, clear, uh, distinguishing it. Thank you. So um, the next thing I want to talk about is the um, get this done my way. Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the extended listing and the delayed listing. Now there are <clears throat> extended listing is very simple. It just means that these are the seller wants to extend the date of the um, expiration. They want to keep it on the market longer. You must have an amendment to the listing contract that shows that extension date. So say if it was going to expire uh, June 4th, you would say the listing has been extended from June 4th to October 1st or whatever date you have. And then you that has to be also signed by a broker. Any amendments to the listing contract must be signed by the broker. Expiration, withdrawal, or um, withdrawn, or extending the listing, or changing the price. So any amendments that you do to the listing contract need to be signed by your seller, by you, the listing agent, and by a broker like me or staff. Now, the one that uh, does have some confusion to it, and we're always reminding you, um, whether you've been in the business 15 years or 15 days, um, the, the distinction and the definition of delayed listing is an excluded listing, which we'll spend more time on today, is um, the part is the learning curve that's really hard for some people. So I want to talk about delayed listing first. And here's the situation. You get a new listing. The seller wants some painting. And now the weather's turned nice. They want to clean up the yard and the landscaping and things like that. And yet the term of your listing is going to start right away. So, so that you don't risk losing the listing to a for sale by owner during this time, you wanna get the listing signed um, and then have it delayed. So the showings are delayed, although your listing is intact. So when you send that listing agreement into MLS with your new listing, um, contract, you also send in a form saying that you are delaying this listing. Now a listing can be delayed up to 21 days 
uh, no longer. And as it says here, it is understood that unless the seller is consented to the terms in the MLS exclusion form, the listing agent or brokerage may not show a property regardless of the status where showings and or ability to submit offers are not being offered to cooperative agent and brokers. Um, so that means during this delayed period, there are no showings and no offers being reviewed um, during that time. Now we have brokers that will send in um, offers, unseen offers, and that can happen, but it generally is a situation if a property is delayed, nobody's allowed into it. Nobody in your firm, no obviously co-brokes, um, and that is in MLS that usually has just maybe the um, front picture of the property. You don't have to add all of the um, internal pictures or things like that. This 21 days or less can also be a good time for you as the listing agent to really develop your marketing. So you want to get it listed, but you are not ready to really start putting it out there. Um, this time of delay gives you time to get professional photos taken, to get um, staging done, to get brochures ready and to be sent out and everything. So it's time for you and the seller to um, prepare this house for a really great opening when it becomes active. So just remember under delayed, it is um, no showings and no um, offers actually. So it is important when you do have an offer and the seller wants it delayed, there is a form that must be sent in with the listing contract. So sellers need to sign this uh, consent of delayed form. It's called seller's authorization to delay showings. It's in zip form. Make sure that you pull that out with your listing contract and the seller is to sign both of them. And then you submit both the delayed form and the listing agreement in the MLS. Um, don't forget the form. MLS will remind you if it says something in your contract that it is a delayed listing and then there's no form. Uh, that's the fine too, unless you uh, send that form in. So MLS will warn you, you've got to send the form in. Don't forget within immediately, um, but get your ducks in a row before you get things ready to go into MLS so that you don't uh, get any fines from them. So any questions about delayed at this point? There is a status in MLS under delayed listing. So you can look up what listings are delayed, but there really isn't a lot of information on there other than this property is in under delayed status. And remember no showings and the ability to submit offers is very limited. As I said, sometimes brokers will submit unseen offers um, but those uh, have a lot of complications with them as well. So if there's no question about delayed listings and you're ready to do that, you're ready to talk to your sellers about the benefits of a delayed listing, if there are any, or if the seller says, no, I want it out there on the market right now, right, ready, um, you do that. Now, now, under delayed, the most days you can delay it is 21, but you can do it for less. And on the form, there's an actual place where you can put a date that the uh, uh, property goes active. So you don't have to do it 21 days. You can do it for 10 days, and you can um, put that date in the form of when the property desires to go active. So if there are no questions about delayed, I will go then to excluded listings. Uh, this was a big movement uh, several years ago by the National 
Association of Realtors, the NAR, um, called the Clear. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, the idea that all um, cooperation, cooperation, right? Clear cooperation of uh, properties. If it is excluded from MLS, now remember MLS is um, a vehicle for all the inventory to be seen. Now there are certain situations where the um, seller is saying, I don't want everybody to see this, my list, that my house is for sale. And there can be a lot of reasons. They just wanna protect the confidentiality. Maybe they are um, a well-known figure in the community either a sports figure or whatever, and they don't want the whole public to realize that this is their house and people can go in and look at all the pictures of their house. So, or they have other reasons to exclude it from the listing from MLS. Then they put it under delayed, excuse me, under excluded listings. That means if you are doing that, you cannot market it in MLS MLS is saying you cannot market it anywhere. So it is a, an agreement that you make that if you are not marketing it through MLS, you absolutely cannot market it anywhere else at all. So let me just read what the stat from MLS says. If the seller or over concerns of protecting their confidentiality directs the agent to exclude <coughs> the listing from the MLS compilation, including dissemination of compilation, sending out brochures or anything like that, MLS authorized public websites, brokerage IDX sites, and from all virtual office websites, files, you must submit via email, uh, email or fax, a copy of the listing contract and a copy of the request to be excluded from multiple listings. So it also has a separate form that the seller must sign. And you can get that form either through um, the form or it's on mlswis.com. Uh, so you can get it right off the MLS site and it must be submitted 48 hours from the term of the contract date. Just like all listings have to be submitted 48 hours after the term of the contract date, uh, that excluded form must be accompanying your listing agreement. The only permissible intended purpose of a seller excluding a property from MLS is to allow privacy and provide additional confidentiality. Selling agents found abusing intended use of the MLS exclusion practices could be assessed liquidated damages by MLS and their huge, they're thousands of dollars, these damages. Um, and it says refer to section seven of the rules regarding liquidated damages. So they even outlay what those are and they increase by the day if they're not stopped. What it really means is, is that there were some, when the excluded from MLS came about, there were some agents that were using it a way to disguise pocket listings. That because it wasn't an MLS, the listing agent could pick and choose who they wanted to see the property. They could use it as a pocket listing, which are illegal in the state of Wisconsin. And they could also adapt to selling it themselves. Um, those are the abuses of putting the listing into exclusion and then um, not for the intended use. The intended use, as they say here, is strictly for the seller's privacy or confidentiality. Excuse uh, me, John. So go ahead. What is permitted as a marketing? How does one market it then if it's, if you can't put on L M MLS and you're not allowed to, I mean, I, yeah. So how does, how can one right. market this? Can, um, Charlie Stalle has even weighed in on this. He doesn't even want it on uh, Keller Williams' Facebook page. That it really should be um, verbal in any way of promoting this MLS 
excluded listing. It's um, calling other co-broke agents, talking to them, um, especially if they're known to be having buyers in this uh, area or buyers in this price range or things like that. Uh, it gets very touchy on how you do it. You just, as an agent, you just need to um, show that you're not discriminating on how you're letting other agents know, but you cannot market it in any tangible way, either email, um, social media, um, text, can't text photos or anything. And I have a little... Could somebody um, uh, mention it in the Tuesday meeting when it says, hey, we're putting, you know, when they're getting the, uh, you know, what's coming, is it permissible to say, I have an, because I think I've seen them, I just don't remember. Yes, yes. and that, that's what Charlie's intention was, and I've said it in a couple of team meetings too, that, um, you know, if you're verbally saying it, like in a team meeting, things like that, um, he's not going to publish it in the review of listings coming up or new listings, things like that. It's, he just doesn't want it published anywhere. But talking about it in a team meeting, talking about it, it's basically up to the listing agent to um, get the word out on these, on these listings. But again, it's going to be the seller saying, I don't want the world to know my house is on the market. And um, you have to honor that confidentiality. It says MLS must be notified via email, and they give the email address or phone of any changes to the status of an excluded property. So you can change it then to active. So you have to notify uh, MLS, including being listed as part of the MLS compilation. Failure to notify the MLS will result in the appropriate sanction. So you must notify MLS if you decide to switch this exclusion to active. And here it goes more clear cooperation. Thank you. That was the word I couldn't remember. Properties being excluded from the MLS compilation are not to be publicly advertised pursuant to the National Association of Realtors clear cooperation policy. Participants, subscribers have and now if you do, if they do catch you marketing it, and I'll trust, trust me, there are agents that will turn you in if they see something like this. Participants, subscribers have one business day to enter the excluded property into the MLS compilation. It means you have to, if you are caught marketing it, you have one day to get it out of excluded and into active. It must go into active. Uh, once advertising of the property has begun. So if somebody catches you putting it on Facebook, um, something that is publicly advertised, maybe a different sites other than Facebook, um, and MLS is notified, you have one business day to turn that into active. There's no other choice. And sometimes the seller is not going to be happy about that. Failure to enter the listing into the MLS compilation, which means active, within one business day of the property being advertised will be sanctioned the current appropriate sanctions as outlined in step, section seven of the MLS rules. And you can look them up, but the fines are very steep. But what it gets down to is no public marketing of any kind is allowed. A property can be shown notifying agents through word of mouth. And um, one way that I know some agents do it, they'll call, say, the uh, managing broker of another office and let them know that they've got this uh, excluded listing, such and such. And that manager can deliver it verbally to their office in a team meeting or something like that. But as long as it's oral and as long as it's not public marketing, um, you won't be sanctioned. But all of this needs to be explained to the seller when they want an excluded listing. There are a lot of times, um, obviously, it's not the best position for a property to be sold. Um, when they're open to the free and open market, uh, they're going to get 
it's a better price. They're gonna get competitive pricing. They're gonna get multiple showings. And um, I think going against that and just having excluded and only handpicked showings, um, you're not gonna get the competition. You're not gonna get the highest and best price for that listing. Um, some sellers don't care, but most sellers do. So if they wanna get the highest equity out of their property, <clears throat> an open listing is the best. But some have very um, realistic, real reasons that they need that confidentiality or they need that uh, privacy and that's fine. But um, sometimes you might have to talk your sellers into it. So, final page that I have here is <clears throat> I just did a screenshot of the place in the main menu on um, the flex page um, where you can find more explanation about excluded listings and here is um, on this page on the main menu it'll say MLS quick links and there's a whole bunch of quick links that you can click on there to get more information. And one of them, which I've expanded is MLS rules and procedures. If you click on that link, you're gonna get, I think it's like a 12 page summary of everything I've talked about today, including more coverage about the excluded listing and delayed listings. Um, another really good thing is to call me or call Call Steph if you have particular questions about a listing, about what your uh, approach to MLS is. Make sure that you give us a call before you just arbitrarily send it in and get a little warning email back. Um, but MLS is very, very, very helpful and supporting. They've got tremendous patience, it seems. So if you have something that maybe Steph and I don't really know uh, the answer to, feel always free to call MLS. Here's their phone number or give them an email at support at metromls.com. <clears throat> and I'm telling you, they're extremely responsive, very happy to help. They want to educate all of us agents more than anything. We've had Jared from MLS come to the office several times. We'll probably continue to have him come to the office several times because we want all of you, our Keller Williams agents to be smart and know what the rules are so you don't get the warnings and you don't get the fines. And um, you can use the MLS as the great tool that it is to get your houses sold. So are any questions about the rules? As I said, if you go on this link of MLS rules and procedures, it's found on the main menu page on um, Plex, uh, you'll have a lot more information that you need. If you need help in doing your first listing, entering your first listing into MLS, um, <clears throat> here's a great place to get that support and that help. Again, asking um, Steph or me uh, for any direction, but we want you to learn how to do it yourself. And there are many good step-by-step videos of doing it. Also a lot of uh, graduated um, steps in writing on how to enter a listing or change the status or change the price of a listing in MLS. Um, it's very user-friendly and a great tool for you as a real estate agent. Any questions about all of this? You're clean and green. Good. Well, I just, um, I don't think there are any questions in chat. Nope. And I hope this was educational enough for you. But again, Steph's gonna be back in town tomorrow. And um, please contact either one of us if you have any questions regarding this topic. Thank you, Joan. This was this made uh, this certainly cleared up a lot of questions I had and confusion. Great. So thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Have a good week. Start of a new good week.